There you are. I'm looking for you everywhere. You're just floating here in my room. Ah. <sighs> uh, you wanna know how I got these scars? <clears throat> okay. I'll tell you. Let's see. Let's start at the beginning. Earliest. I got a scar on my knee from crashing my bike. You can't even see that anymore. Let's go with this one. The Big Daddy. Can you see it? So, once upon a time, in the fifth grade, I was up in a tree and I was with my friends neighbor kids and we're all up there <clears throat> and uh, it's like 14 somewhere between 12 to 14 feet in the air and we're right in the ditch in my front yard and we're all up there playing and we got our fort and we're all around and <clears throat> I look down off this branch and I'm like you know what I'm gonna jump and the older kid he looks at me and he goes Don't do it. <clears throat> he goes, he actually looked at me, he goes, if you die when you land, I'm going to laugh at you. And so I was like, oh yeah, uh, funny thing about me, if someone says don't do something, I usually do it. <laughs> so I get, I'm hanging from this tree and I'm between fifth and sixth grade, this is summer. Three, two, one, and I drop. And unbeknownst to me, there was an old, like, cattle herding barbed wire fence, old rusty fence, or it was just on the side of the road that we built our rock yard around. And there was one little wire that somehow, all the years mowing the lawn and whatever in the house it had just been missed. And there was one little piece of this fence just sticking up about this high and I let go and I land and my knees buckle and I go like this because it's 14 feet and I go down and meanwhile when I'm coming down this little piece of barbed wire fence hits me right here and it goes in and it cuts me it goes into my mouth and cuts me all the way up the scar you see and I go down I come up and just like complete total shock and there was just a little piece of my lip right here that was basically holding my face together. And this whole area of skin right here flopped open. So there's a giant hole in my face held together by a little tiny piece of lip. And you could see my teeth through the hole. You see into my mouth and I was just like, and covered it up and just started screaming and just ran to the house, which was like a hundred yards away. And I took off running and I get into the house and I come running in and I'm like all distraught and I can hardly remember it. I just know what people have told me. And I get in there and my mom's like, like, what is going on? And she sees it and she's like, we need face specialists. We need to get to the hospital. We need this, that. My dad comes in the room and he's like, no, like, we don't need to go to the hospital. We don't need a stupid doctor. Who needs those? And he comes in, and my mom said, I took my hand off my face, and the flap of skin fell open. My dad went, <gasps> I'll drive. And then, so he loaded me up in the truck, and we headed to the hospital, where, I'll never forget it, they gave me a shot for rust, uh, I knew the name of it, but I can't think of it right now. And it's just the most painful shot in the world. And I remember they didn't tell me they were going to do it. And I just screamed at the top of my lungs in the middle of the ER. And then after that, <clears throat> the ER is like, hey, we can't do anything for you. This is serious. We have a, 
a specialist, a plastic surgeon down the road. So they loaded me back up in the car and they drove me to a plastic surgeon. And he, we got there and this guy's all pissed. And he's like, I can't believe they gave him that shot. They just wanted to charge you money. They didn't need to give you that shot. And so my parents were all pissed because they're like, he basically is like, I could have put him under when we're going to do the surgery. And then I could have given that shot while he was out. Instead, they did it while I was awake. The most painful shot ever. And it was just so they would get paid for it. But whatever. As long as I got the shot, I guess. I didn't get locked jaw. And so I remember sitting in this doctor's chair and he blew up a glove. And he turned it into like a cow's udder. You know when you blow up a big surgical, surgical glove? And I got this cow's udder. And I think he might have drawn a face on it or whatever. And by that time, I'm all bandaged up, bandaged up, and I'm like, whatever. And then I remember waking up at home, and uh, all the neighbor kids had gathered at my house. Like, they're at a candlelight vigil. And uh, they drew pictures for me. And I think they meant they were doing well, and I took it as they're doing well. But looking back... They drew like Frankenstein, but with like a million stitches out here and bolts in his head. And I was like, oh man, they care. But as an adult looking back, maybe Frankenstein wasn't the best choice to cheer me up. But as a kid, I thought it was cool. <coughs> so, my one neighbor, I see him like a week or two later, and I'm all stitched up. And I'm all better healing, like whatever. Now I'm like thinking it's cool. And, uh, and the neighbor kid looks at me and he goes, he's like, hey, uh, you know how you were about to jump and I said, don't do it. And uh, I said, I would laugh at you if you fell and died. He goes, well, you fell. And I thought you died. And I didn't laugh. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> and then... Uh, so that healed up and I don't you see a scar but it was it's like nothing to me anymore. They said if it was any like more to the right or left, I would have lost all feeling in my face. But instead it just did nothing. Sewed it up back to normal. Um and then <clears throat> so after that I think I was in the eighth grade or ninth grade. And I, uh, I was standing at my locker talking to some girl I used to know. And we were flirting or whatever, having fun like kids do. And uh, it came time to like, I was trying to shut my locker and she was like not letting me shut my locker. And she took a step away from my locker. And, uh, excuse me. She took a step away from my locker. And I took that opportunity to be like, quickly slam it shut. And she kicked her foot in front of the locker. And my quickly slam it shut hit her foot and bounced back. And the locker hit me square in the forehead. And I don't even know if you can see this one, but right there I got a scar from there to there. I don't know. Is it picking it up? I don't know, but so... I get hit in the forehead and it's the locker splits open my forehead right there and all of a sudden I look at this girl and I'm like ow like I just got hit in the head like I'm like ooh you know seeing uh seeing Tweety Birds flying around and I look at this girl and she's like like this and all of a sudden I just feel trip 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 and it's just all well, some blood just starts pouring all over my face and I go to the nearest classroom, which is like my math teacher's classroom, so I know the guy. And he's like, holy crap. So he bandages my head right there, and he's got gauze in his desk, and he wraps it up. And he like overdoes it to the point where I got so much bandage on my head that it looks like a turban. And it's just like out to here and round, and I'm like, 
okay, like, just for this little cut right here, but it was bleeding. So then I went to wrestling practice, and my dad was the coach. I just remember walking in the door with this huge bandage on, and he's just, like, he looks at me, and he's like, like, what the, what the hell? What the shit is wrong with you? And I was like, I don't know, split my head open, Dad, I don't know. So I don't even remember. I never got stitches or anything. I think I just eventually took the bandages off and it was scabbed up and it just healed on its own. And then a year later, summer between 8th grade and ninth grade, I got, I don't know if you can see this one either, but right here on my hand, this knuckle was another pretty bad one. Kind of just a red mark but I was carrying I was building pools with my cousin and we had this thin sheet of metal or it goes it's part of the in-ground pool and that's what we were doing and I'm carrying this thing and I'm walking backwards and they had orange fence around the pool and as I'm walking backwards this fence wraps around my foot and so I'm walking backwards, someone's got the other end, and they're walking with it, and we're going, all of a sudden my foot gets caught. And I'm like, shit, and it happens in a second. And I'm like, like we keep going, and it's my cousin's like 30, 35 at the time, and I'm whatever, just, he's like a full man, and I'm just a kid still. And it's just got my foot locked, and he's just overpowering me just by walking. And so we're going, and I'm like, man, there's not enough time for me to figure out how to tell him to stop or what for whatever or to figure out because this happens in a span of like a second. And I topple backwards, and I throw the sheet of metal like this like so it doesn't cut my head off. And I go, boom, and I did. It ran down my knuckle, and it just, like, again, like my skin flopped open off my knuckle. And I was like, oh. Like, this is bad, and it's all blood again, and I remember I went to the holes, and I was washing it off, but I wasn't looking. I was like, I can't look at it. I don't want to know, and I remember my cousin. He's over there. I was like, I was like, just look at it for me, and just tell me how bad is it? <laughs> like, did I lose the finger? And I remember my cousin. He goes, all right, let me see. He pulls it off, and he goes, oh, it's bad. And I just, like, f like felt sick as soon as he said that. And then he started laughing. He's like, I mean, it's a cut. Like, it's deep. Probably needs stitches. I wrapped that one up best I could and just let it heal on its own, too. I remember months later, I was up north, and it just popped back open like after a month or so. Maybe it was a week or so. But it popped open, and I was like, oh, this might never heal. And it was all bleeding and stuff again. And then I have one that I don't know if I can even see it anymore. It's right there in my inner eye. And I was driving a golf cart. And we tied a sled to the back. And it's summertime. So we're dirt surfing the sled behind the golf cart. And we're coming behind and we're driving around and I got whoever was in the back is being cocky and they're like you can't throw me off well if you turn the golf cart and you cut it in the arc it makes the sled go faster so you can turn and just shoot them around well this time I was like this person's not letting go and I'm like I'm gonna launch them and I got these aviator sunglasses on and there's another kid in the passenger seat and I whipped this cart around and I turn it sharp and the sled goes out and I turned it sharp enough that with the sled pulling the back it uh it put me up on two wheels I went up on two wheels and I kind of panicked which never panic when you're doing anything I cut the wheel back hard like to put the two because we're going over and I cut it back, and when I did, it just 
boom, flipped it the other way and completely just smashed us on our side. And I remember flying into the ceiling of the golf cart and going, boom, hitting myself on the golf cart. And then feeling the person on the passenger side land on my back and knocking me even harder into the ceiling. So it was like, ceiling, ceiling. And then we're all like confused and stuff. And again, I can like feel blood running down my face. And I'm like, oh, is it, are you all right? Like, is everyone all right? And everyone's like, yeah, we're all right. Oh, I remember. The kid goes, the kid in the pasture seat, I was like, you all right? He goes, yeah, but I don't think you are. And that's when I felt the blood coming down. And I was like, oh, come on, again? And so... I didn't realize it till later. Like, I was like, I'll cut myself on the ceiling. But I was up at the house for like an hour or whatever, and we're talking about it. And I, re I suddenly I was like, you know what? I don't have my glasses on anymore. Like, they must come off in the accident. And actually what had happened was when I hit my what, face first on the ceiling, I had smashed the glasses into my face and that's what the little nose piece went into my nose right here and that was what caused that scar those are all the major scars I can think of the ones that stick around and don't want to go away actually I think this one is pretty well gone now but this one will always be there and this one will always be there and this one will always be there. Tell people this one's from fighting. Don't give away my secret. Alright. Go to bed. <laughs>